guys. I'm going to take a look at some fluid dynamics here. A question a lot of people have is how does the fluid work in Factorio? And it is not fixed yet. Um, the devs promise us that they will fix it someday, but it's not fixed yet. So I just want to show you something. I have creative mode on, obviously. I have uh, from the debug menu, I have um, fluid status showing in all the related fluid entities. Um, I have some infinite fluid sources. Everything is set for crude oil. Using crude oil here as our base. And um, so I have a storage system here containing uh, 423,000 units of um, crude oil. And feeding what I would consider to be a typical um, players, possibly new players, um, set up where they stack a bunch of tanks together and show the issues that happen when you do this. Okay, so here's all these are balanced at 25,000 each tank. So let's say we want to fill two new tanks. We've added two new tanks to the system. Let's watch what happens. So we put a make this connection here and watch what happens. Now we can see that this pipe is starting to fill and the fluid is flowing through here. So it instantly drains all these pipes. Of course, this is through a pump, from a pump, and then into these pipes. So as these pipes fill, then these fill, and these will fill fairly equally. You can see this one is ahead because the fluid comes in here and then flows to here. And what happens when we approach 25,000, which is full, is we start to drain. Well, we've been draining our massive 423,000. And it didn't just drain this tank. It drained this tank and this tank and this tank and this tank so it it tries to drain the tanks equally and then it tries to fill the tanks equally but we're trying to push 50,000 units through a pipe that is not designed to hold it holds 100 units at a time 100 units at a time and a pump can only push 1200 or 12,000 units per second um, but it's pushing 12,000 units through a pipe that only holds 100 units. So it takes, you know, however long that took to fill those two tanks. So that was with a pump pushing. Now we'll take, we'll disconnect that one. And we'll allow the our bank to stabilize, which it has. Okay, and then we're going to connect here. No pump. This is just uh, basically letting gravity take its course to fill two tanks similarly connected without a pump. So we'll watch. We can see the fluid starting to fill and starting to fill. And once again, it's gravity fed. So here, this tank is down to 20,000 and 23,000, 24,000, 24,000. 25,000. And similarly, if we go this way, 23, 23, 24, 24, 25. So it's draining the entire network of tanks and slowly filling our two new tanks. So 18,000 there, 20,000 there. Again, this tank will fill first because as this one fills, it drains over into this one. So as this one approaches... The equalizing point, see now here we have 23,000 here, so this one will ever only fill to 23,000. And now we have to wait for the whole bank to fill to 25,000. Now it's at 24,000. And so we have to wait. It's at 24,000 here, so this is there's 24,000. This is still 23,000. Now this one has to fill to 24,000. And now we have to wait for 25,000 over here. It's at 24,000. These are at 25,000. There's 25,000. And then 
Now we have to wait for this one to fill. We're just going to check back and forth. There's somewhere, there we go, 25,000 and 25,000. Okay, so see how long that took. I'm not, I'm not timing this, obviously, so just however long that takes to fill. But you can see it took a little bit longer without a pump. All right, now the system has stabilized once again. So let's try filling two tanks with one pipe between them and see what happens. And we'll see that this tank starts to fill and then this pipe starts to fill and then this tank starts to fill. So we're going to have a little more lag between the two tanks. This one's at 10,000 and this one's at 8,000. And once again, it's draining back into the entire um, storage tank bank here. And once again, this one's at 22,000, 23,000. So it spreads, tries to balance the load throughout all of the connected tanks. So here, we'll let this fill again, 20,000, 21,000. And it's going to do the same thing. It's going to take a little bit longer because now we're filling this tank and then restricting the flow through a pipe into this tank once again. And we'll see how we do here, 23,000. So once again, this will balance out. 24,000 so now it'll just trickle over this is gravity fed once again thank you autosave 24,000 24,000 and we'll see when it fills So that last little bit of fluid takes a little while to push through there. Okay, we're full here, so we should be there. Okay, we made it. All right, now here we are again with two pipes, basically the same thing. But you can see that there is that lag from this, from now it has to travel from here to here to here, and you can see the slight difference. These two should balance pretty quickly, evenly with each other, but it delays the balance between these two tanks by a bit. And we'll see it fill. And the same thing will happen here. It'll drain our main supply. So now our main supply is trying to equalize And once again, we'll watch this fill. 22,000 again, this is gravity fed. If we add a pump, because why not? Let's just add a pump, put one here. And that does help to fill the tanks a little bit quicker. And then now, at least these pumps did fill a little bit quicker by adding the pump, but we still have to wait for our um, our, our bank, our main supply to refill up to 25,000. Okay. Now let's go from our main supply to one tank which is filled by a pump, or one one tank which is filling another tank by a pump. So we have our full supply here. We have 25,000, let's see, 25,000 here. We're all good. Grab our pipe. Now watch what happens. This, this tank will remain virtually empty, just a few units, while this tank fills all the way to 25,000. So down line, these, the, these pipes will be half full and these tanks will empty equalize trying to equalize and trying to push 
to this tank. So now we have to wait for this one tank to fill. So obviously it's it's faster to fill one tank than it is two tanks. So adding that pump did help to fill that tank at least. But here we still have to wait for this tank to fill and then we have to wait for these to backlog once again. And we're at 23,000. And 24,000, 24,000, 25,000. Okay, they're starting to fill. 25,000, 25,000. Full. It's working its way down. Full. And full. Okay, now we're full. All right. So, now, let's try to fill our, our train. We have three wagons on our train, and we're going to connect this all up here. As if this was our oil outpost, and we have a train coming in. All right, now we have to just connect all this up with pipes. There we go. Oh, I didn't connect to the tanks. Ah, oh, sorry about that. That goes there. Uh, okay. So this is all one big, basically one big tank now, except it's, you know, has to find its way to here to get out. Um, so this is our supply, and let's see, this pump is turned off, yes. So we can go ahead and add this pipe. So now there's fluid here, but none here. So when I turn this um, constant combinator on, that will turn the pump on, and we'll see uh, what happens if we try to fill a train from basically empty tanks. So we'll turn this on. Now we have to wait for the pipes to fill. And the fluid is, is flowing straight through the pipe into the tank and into the tanker. So now we have to basically wait for the tankers to fill. And they fill unevenly due to the way the fluids work. So they will fill unevenly. So you can see this bottom tanker filled first. So now that has pressurized this tank, and now this tank is starting to fill. While this tank is virtually empty, and this tank, so this tanker has filled. And so this tank is starting to fill. And then this tank is still empty because all the fluid is passing through until here. Now it's in there. I should hit alt mode so we can see that. And now... Our tankers are all full, 25,000, and we are going to send our tank over there to be emptied. Our train, goodbye train. Now, what we're going to do is wait until these tanks are completely full before we have our train come back. So, well, there's one full, 23,000, they're almost full, 24,000. Okay, it should be full by the time we come back. So now we're going to just go ahead and drain these tanks. Just so that we have a place to dump our fluids again when, when our train comes back. Wait until this is full. Okay, we're full. Now, when we send our train back to fill. Watch how quickly this fills. Filling from full tanks. And... Approximately two seconds, all three tankers are full because we worked from full tanks. Full tanks transferring through a pump, which can pass 12,000 units per second. A full tank holds 25,000 units. A tanker holds 25,000 units. A pump can push 12,000 units per second. So it takes a little over two seconds to fill each wagon. And since these all three tanks were all full, 
it filled the whole train in just a little over two seconds. Let's send it over to empty it again. And now we'll show what happens. I'm going to dis I'm going to turn this pump off. And I'm going to drain these tanks. Okay, these tanks are empty. So, now let's see what happens. If you try to fill a, a train, let's empty these tanks first. Now this is what happens when you try to fill a tank with uneven, unevenly loading tanks, which is what happens. That's the way fluid works. So we'll go ahead and turn this pump on. And we'll go ahead and send our train. So these tanks are not full. So they will instantly drain what's in these tanks, as you saw, and they'll start to fill the train wagons. And now we have to wait for the trains to fill, and we'll see the bottom one will fill up first again. And then the top one. And so this tank is starting to fill. And now this one is almost full. Now this one's full. Now this tank will start to fill. And then finally, this tanker will fill. And then this tank will fill. Now, you might say, I want to balance the tank so that the train fills equally every time. Let's shut this back off again. The issue is it would take a, a lot of circuitry to fill the tanks equally, okay, but the problem is you're still going to have to load your train with 75,000 units. Three tankers, 25,000 units per tanker, it's still 75,000 units of oil. So whether you have, how much do we have here? We have what, 14,000 plus 14,000 plus 14,000. 14, what is that, 56,000? Uh, 43, uh, 46, 42,000. Sorry about the math there. Uh, 42,000 units. 42,000 units is 42,000 units, no matter how you spread it out. So let's send it over to the, the fill station. This pump is turned off, so it will dump everything it has into the tankers. And so now we have 42,000 units in the, in the uh, train. Or 40, yeah, it was, it doesn't fraction, so it says 43,000 because there was fractions. Um, so we have basically 42, 43,000 units in the train, and we still have to wait for the train to fill to 75,000, whether it fills all at once or one tank, one at a time, it doesn't matter. Now you may think there's an advantage to, okay, as this one fills up, pump it into that one and pump it into that one, but still you have all that ex excess wiring and pumping and then trying to rebalance and rebalance it's not worth the energy. The thing is, if you have, if you're sending three tanker wagons to your station, then you want to have 75,000 units ready for your train. If you only have 50,000 units of the train, don't send 75,000 worth of train. Send 50,000 worth of train, and then your trains will fill every time. So there you have it, guys. I know that there's going to be arguments on this one. I hope there are. Let's duke it out in the comments. Thanks for watching. And uh, let's, let's see if we can't figure this out together. Thanks.